Why? Okay, first question I always ask when two people collaborate on a show together, I just want to know how you guys met. Tell me the love story. <laughs> uh, way back in uh, the, the, the mid 80s, uh, we, uh, we went to college together and we uh, started writing in college. We did um, some one act plays there, uh, these, these kind of comedy musicals. And then um, we graduated from school and we decided that we wanted to keep doing it. We enjoyed working to, with each other and so we, we started out writing sitcoms and sort of moved over to film and then moved back to TV and we've been together longer than we've been with our spouses. Did you yeah. know right away, like first day in class, you're like, that's going to be my man in Hollywood? I don't think I, the first day, but I, I, what I found was there was, a, there was a, such a commonality of the things that we, that we worshipped, the things that we, we looked at and said, oh my God, that's, that's, that's the thing that, that sparked me. I mean, obviously Woody Allen, you know, things like that. that you guys uh, love him because you quote him all the time. Every interview I hear about Woody Allen, I like it. It's, it shows like kind of a, that fan, fanboy vibe for it. I mean, I like a lot of my hero. Like you just were talking about Amy Schumer, obsessed with her. And I talk about her every chance I get. I mean, that's the thing is, what I love is that there is always something new coming along that somebody's creating. And in this world of, of sort of the internet and, open, and this open world of television and this extraordinary uh, golden age, Every time you turn around, there's something else. I mean, we'll start, you know, we'll we'll get on, we'll Skype each other, we FaceTime almost, you know, most days to work, and we'll, the first thing we'll do is talk about shows we watch. Oh my God, did you see that Americans episode, or did you see that Silicon Valley, or he's ahead of me on Better Call Saul, and that's the amazing thing is that that we still, you know, I think we are we're di very different people, but in terms of our sensibilities, I think we learned how to write together. And the things that I don't do well, Michael does really well, and the things that I think Michael doesn't do as well as I do, I, I fill in those blanks, and I've never found a moment where I felt it was more, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, more wor it, it was worth it to, to do it on my own, and so I think this has been an extraordinary thing, and to be doing this for 25 years, and to really never you be on a have been doing this for 25 years? Yeah, hard, well, uh, 20, technically 24, but... 24. Men in Hollywood never age, am I right? <laughs> my God. We rub sheep placenta on our faces every night, and yeah, it works. Well, I want to hear because you know, in college, you kind of go through that like broke phase in the beginning where you're really trying to pave your way. What was the first big job where you guys kind of felt like, okay? We we got an episode of a TV show called Herman's Head, which was a sitcom on Fox, um, and it was it was by this company, Witt Thomas, who we love. Paul Witt and Tony Thomas. They did shows like Golden Girls and Empty Nest, and. Um, and it we was spent over two years there. Yeah, we, we ended up that that we parlayed that into working on a whole bunch of shows for them. And it was that the show was about a guy who has it's it's kind of like Inside Out. It was about you go inside the, his head and you see his thoughts. And um, it was a little slapsticky, but <laughs> you know what? What year was it? Was it the 80s? Was, was it the 90s? 90, 90, 90, 94. 94. 1994, and we, we had, uh, on our show, we had the guest star Bob Denver, who played Gilligan, so that was our claim to fame. <laughs> and honestly, at that moment in time, it was, it was as excited as I think either of us could ever be about anything, to get your first episode of something. And, you what know, was your first big splurge purchase with money from becoming successful, writing together? I mean, I bought a million shares of Apple stock. What did you do, Michael? No, I'm kidding. I'm, I didn't. Um, I think, yeah, I think I bought a TV or a couch. No, I know what it was. I know exactly what it was. What I bought? It was a Sony XBR TV with headphones. That's true. I That's what you bought. Was the headphones like a big selling point on this TV? Well, they were wireless, so you could like be across the room and watch. And, and I lived in an apartment with very thin walls, and so I always felt bad, and I didn't want the neighbors to, you know, to bother the neighbors. But that's because I'm neurotic, so. I think I bought a new car, and that was, and not, not, not then, but like the first, maybe two years in. That's no, probably right. It's like, you got a car, I got a TV. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that really is sort of the, the, tim the timber of our, rela timber right of our relationship. Now, yeah. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> you got a new car, I got a suit, so. <laughs> and I, I just, I love hearing these stories. Anyone that kind of grew up together in the industry, I mean, this, this city has a lot of like backstabbing and things like that. So there's something refreshing about the fact that you guys have been together for so long. Um, last question, I would just love to hear, what was the most memorable for both of you moment in Hollywood, whether it was the Oscars or some really cool place you got to go or a set. What was, what stands out the most of like, that was the coolest experience? Uh, that would be right now on uh, CIGI TV. CGTV. Um, 
what's the moment? I think for, uh, I'll be honest, um, last year sitting on Sylvester Stallone's couch in his house, that was pretty damn cool. That was pretty awesome, just like kind of, you know, hanging out with Sly. And Not talking. everyone can say that. And he was telling us about this, this, this Creed movie he was doing, and we were like, that's an amazing idea. You know, yeah, yeah, it turns out it was, and we were, yeah. You we have to one-up his now. That was a big one. I, don't, I can't do it sort of celebrity-wise, but this is, what I'll, this is what I'll say, honestly, and it's, it's not kissing ass to my own show and, and Steven Soderbergh, but I think the, the, the most memorable thing for my entire career was when Jack and I went to meet with Steven for the first time, and we, we, he was making, he had a whiteboard up, and he was making 10 columns, and we were going to break the show in, we had two days. And we were really saying, like, how are we going to do this? And we just got down to business, did the work, and it was probably the greatest, I think, experience we had as writers. It just, it called on everything that we learned over the years. And it was just so, it, we both walked out of there just feeling like, We'll never experience something like this again. But oh, by the way, we did it the next season, and we did it the next season. So, <laughs> so yeah. So we're 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 incredibly lucky. I mean, you know, you do this for years and years, and you get to do the thing that you dreamed of doing. And uh, you know, I, I think there's, you know, I think we know what's what our what our what our, you know, what our what our epitaph will be in the trades, the Nick. And if that's what they remember us for, I, I think I'm hoping Harmon's head. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm very, I just love stories like this. I mean, that is such a cool story and you guys coming up. And you just might have the longest relationship in Hollywood. Possibly. Yeah, there's a couple others out there. but, but. <laughs> You're getting up there. You're in the golden years. Possibly. Um, there, are some, uh, there are some partners out there who have probably been around longer. Um, but we only knew about it recently. So, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations Thank on everything and enjoy tonight. Thank, Thank you. you so much.